Um, I would just add, so typical protocol uh, for empowered guests is to turn off your videos uh, until uh, the presentation component. It just allows council to focus on those screens that are on when they're voting and that kind of thing. Uh, but please feel free to turn on your cameras if you're speaking or um, uh, if you have something to add to the discussion. Thank you. <coughs> The live stream is working. Good afternoon, Council, and welcome to our special Council meeting uh, for October the 28th. We're here welcoming uh, today the InPower Enterprises Board and staff, and so thank you for being here. And I'll just confirm with staff that we have our uh, live streaming going. We are good to go. Very good. So welcome again, everyone. Uh, just a reminder, if you would um, mute your device when you're not speaking, it, it just helps with the uh, with the meeting so that people can hear. And I apologize right away that my neighbor has decided it's time to get his leaf blower out. So if you hear noise in the background, <laughs> that's what it's all about. So we uh, I would like to advise you that we are audio and video recording and we sh it shall form part of the public record which will be retained according to the town's retention bylaw and for more information about the collection uh, of that information you can contact the clerk's office. So I would start with a uh, mover and a seconder to approve the agenda for this part of the meeting. That is moved by Councillor Van Berkel and seconded by Councillor Payne. All those in favor of the recommendation as shown on the screen, that is carried. Now the next item uh, requires the deputy mayor and I don't see him on the, in the meeting yet. Uh, as I am a member of the board of directors for both uh, in power and in services, uh, it is custom for me to relinquish the chair for this portion of the meeting. And uh, without the deputy mayor here, um, that duty would fall to uh, Councillor Nickel, who is the, uh, the alternate um, head of council when um, the deputy mayor or I are unable. So um, a mover and a seconder to uh, appoint, and we'll have to change that to Councillor Nickel. Uh, Councilor Van Berkel. Oh, you're moving it? Okay, thank you. And seconding Councilor Waters, thank you. And I should have also told you, I apologize that I did get an email from um, Councilor Fowler that he was tied up at, at uh, his real job and he'll be here for seven o'clock, but he was gonna miss this portion of the meeting and wanted me to send his regrets. So um, having said that, all in favor of the recommendation? Any opposed? That's carried and I'll turn it over to you, uh, Councillor Nickel. Hey, Your Worship, uh, nothing gets thrown into the fire today after the day I've already had, but I'll see if I can get through this for everybody uh, as seamlessly as possible. Uh, so the business item that's on the table right now, I uh, recommended that the minutes for the Empower Corporation Annual Gender Meeting from June 5th, 2019 be received. I need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Saudi, seconded by Councillor Waters. All those in favor? That's carried. And business item 4.3, the presentation from George Chaparu, interim president and CEO of Enterprises Incorporated and Empower Corporation, re-enterprises in Empower. I believe we received that first and then We'll receive the presentation and then vote on that after, I believe. Mr. Chaparu. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So as far as the presentation goes, I ask, uh, there we go. So next slide, please. 
so this is the town's organizational chart. So in power, enterprises, in services, or separate corporations, they all report to the town of Innisfil. There is no holding company at this point in time. So each each entity will have to do a, a separate annual general meeting, which is what we're what we're doing. And next slide, please. So the board of directors. This is for enterprises. Enterprises is the uh, non-regulated company. Uh, so uh, Jason Rayner, uh, Lynn Dolan, they are directors, uh, ex officios while holding office. Uh, at this point, there is a private sector representative uh, uh, board member that's vacant. We're continuing our search and uh, um, a candidate will be, will be pending. Next one, please. So we're asking the, the shareholder to approve the amendment to bylaw number one, which is basically housekeeping. So in section 101, uh, where it says a private sector representative uh, in the past, uh, the way it was written was that only a board member from in power could be a board member for enterprises. So what this amendment does, it allows for other board members other than those from in power to be board members. And what we're seeking is those, those individuals who are entrepreneurial and those who have certain um, independent business skills that would be valuable for this corporation. And also at the bottom, at the composition level, uh, we had only one private sector representative. So now uh, we're asking to have up to three private sector representatives. Uh, next one, please. So executive team, myself on an interim basis, Danny Prasad, he's the chief op operating officer and Glenn McAllister, he's the chief financial officer treasurer. So next, please. So the core business, it's non-regulated. Uh, the in-power business is basically regulated by the Ontario Energy Board. So in this company, what we have is uh, we rent the Sentinel lights, which are basically at the end of rural laneways. Uh, they're unmetered, so basically, so we have the obligation to to rent these to customers. We have numerous cell phone uh, towers around town, so we uh, rent these things to rent space to cell phone providers, to provide continuity and communication for our, our residents in town. And also uh, about 2015, we converted all the town street lights to LED street lights and this company uh, did the financing so the debt would not be in the town's books. Next one, please. So we have, we're looking at four new uh, tower projects to improve communications within town. Uh, one is at the Bell Ewart uh, distribution station, which is uh, where fire hall number, number two is. And we're doing the detailed design. Uh, Stroud fire hall station three, we're also looking at a tower there. Uh, Cookstown wastewater treatment plant. There's, uh, there's kind of a, a dead zone there because it's in the valley. We're looking at designs there and also the Churchill Tower. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, agreements at the Churchill Tower. Uh, next one, please. So here's our financial statements. Uh, I'll leave this to uh, Glenn to continue, please. Good evening, Mr. Chair and shareholders. Um, what I will do is I'll run through the uh, 2019 audited financial statements. So we'll start with the statement of income and comprehensive income. Um, in 2019, uh, in power operations were business as usual. Um, we completed the Sandy Cove communication tower near the end of 2019, but it did not go into service until 2020. Uh, as such, there were no new communication contracts signed or entered into in 2019. So there was no significant increase in revenue for 2019. In, uh, enterprises operating expenses increased by about approximately $50,000 in 2019 due to a number of one-time expenses. 
During the year, we investigated the accounting and legal implications related to the potential future growth opportunities uh, of enterprises. There was also an increase in labor attributed uh, to enterprises, which was related to investigating the potential future growth opportunities. As such, enterprises saw a net loss from operations in 2019 of $17,000, which again was due to the one-time expenses noted above. Um, the statement of financial position, um, on the, there wasn't much change um, on the asset side. Um, we did see an increase at the end of the year in receivables of about $11,000, which was due to a recoverable job related to the WiMAX system uh, that was paid subsequent to the year, received subsequent to the year end. And we also saw a capital addition of about $200,000, which was for the Sandy Cove Tower. In the liabilities, there was an increase in amounts due to the related party, which is in power of uh, approximately $260,000, and this amount is due to in power for the Sandy Cove Tower construction. Um, so that is the major, the major changes and variances for 2019. Uh, the 2019 audited statements are going to be, I'm not sure if they have been, but they will be provided to the clerk's office. Um, if you have any um, more detailed questions, I'm available to answer those at a later date. Oh, sorry, and that's all that I had for that. Thank you. Uh, Glenn, if I, may, if I may, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. um, Glenn, uh, is, is our auditors uh, uh, zooming in today? Uh, yes, I see, I see Cameron here. I don't have everybody on my screen, so uh, Cameron Grubb from um, uh, KPMG and um, Matt Pettick as well, but I don't, I don't have everybody on my screen, so I'm not sure if he's here. Would, uh, would one of those two individuals like to uh, just say a couple words uh, regarding the authenticity of the audited statements? Of course, um, we have completed our audit of the financial statements and provided our report to management in which we concluded that there um, was no items that would uh, indicate that these financial statements are materially misstatement. Thank you very much. So next, next slide, please. So these are the recommendations. Uh, to, to our shareholders, council, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, I, I think we can go back to the agenda and uh, if there are any questions, uh, we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Questions or comments from uh, members of council for, for the presentation? Councillor Waters and Councillor Saudi next. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Nichols. Um, my question has to do with other opportunities open to enterprises uh, related to uh, power, uh, to um, in power. And my question is: in numerous occasions, I have talked to in power about the idea of uh, more serious conservation programs, but unfortunately, the programming part is heavily regulated by the Ministry of Energy. And so, I was wondering whether or not those type of programs. Uh, which we conservation programs would be something that if there's a revenue opportunity that enterprises would be interested in reviewing. Uh, through Mr. Chairman uh, to Councillor Waters, we are, and I'm going, I'm going to refer this to our CFO Glenn because he was in charge of the conservation program, uh, which, which to us, ha we are wrapping up due to uh, a political uh, issues from the independent electricity system operator. So Glenn, would you mind uh, uh, giving us a quick recap, please, about the, uh, the future of the uh, conservation program? Yeah, um, through the chair to um, Councillor Waters. So you are correct um, in that conservation is, um, it comes from, it, it's mandated by the Ministry of Energy through the Ontario Energy Board 
and now through the independent electricity system operator, which is the ISO. So uh, for the past, I want to say the past eight to nine years, uh, LDCs managed uh, conservation and demand management. Um, in 2019, the conservation and demand management programs were removed from uh, the LDCs and are now run provincially by the, uh, the IESO. So the LDCs are not allowed to use their own monies um, under the current regime um, to do CDM. So CDM was always funded from the province um, and the IESO, and it was funded with either tax dollars or other dollars, but not um, ratepayer dollars. The current program ends the end of December 2020, and this is that's the Conservation First framework. The IESO is currently looking at the next generation, which is a four-year program, so it'll be a January 2021 through to December 2024. That program hasn't been finalized yet, but it we expect it's going to run in a similar manner as the, the way it's running now, with the the LDC being, I'll say, the, the middleman. Um, um, we'll be there for customer contact, customer engagement, but we won't be actually running any of the programs. From a revenue point of view, um, if we were to try to run something through enterprises, the major problem with conservation and the reason that it's run at the provincial level and at a higher level is that it's incredibly expensive. Um, and at the moment, enterprises, um, we, don't, we don't have the, the capital necessary to invest in any type of significant type of conservation program. So we are looking at other, you know, there are other things. There is battery storage. There is other types of um, generation, behind the meter generation, um, distributed energy. There's those types of solutions which we are looking at. But conservation is one of those types of programs that uh, if not mandated by the pro by the province doesn't usually get done I don't know if that answered your question or if it was a roundabout way but um, um, I, I, it does answer the question so I, I do appreciate that but I just wondering whether or not um, a program around uh, rentals so there's all sorts of uh, companies that offer rentals in terms of on the gas side and um, whether or not and, and and we got out of that business a few years ago in terms of uh, in power did whether or not there's an opportunity around uh, um, uh, heat pump uh, technology that uh, through rental systems where I would I, I don't think the capital outlay would be that much because you know it's being assumed by the consumer and not by us so I guess uh, my opportunity my, my question is around the idea of uh, heat pump hot water tanks, uh, heat pump or uh, all climate heat pumps for heating and cooling in homes, those types of things when not their rental opportunities where in, uh, in enterprises could uh, uh, provide conservation programs uh, through a rental program. Um, I believe and I can't remember exactly, I believe when uh, I was probably in the 2018 presentation, um, it is something that we have looked at, not seriously looked at. It was something on the list of things to look at going forward. Uh, the last couple of years, we've been focused on in power. Um, there's a lot of things going on in in power, uh, infrastructure related, and and that type of stuff, which is is requiring um, both uh, Danny Prasad's and my time. But we do have a list of. Um, invest, I'll call them investment opportunities and suggestions in enterprises that we do want to um, to look at. So I will make sure that that's something that uh, that Danny and I and George in the interim um, discuss and see if there's uh, see if there's an appetite at the board and then an opportunity for that going forward. Uh, thank you. So I, one thing I would recommend then is that you. Um... Uh, that you figure out in terms of your uh, customer base, 
uh, what the number are in terms of electric hot water heaters. Because when I asked two years ago, no one in power could tell me how many electric hot water heaters they had as uh, in terms of their customer base. So it's difficult to assume to assess what the opportunity is if you really do even don't know who your customers are. Um, I, I agree. It's, it is information that we, the LDCs did have at one time, um, a number of years ago, and then the rules changed and LDCs got out of the water heater rental business and some of that type of information, i.e. what type of um, um, heating or you know how um how homes are heated whether they have electricity whether they have natural gas that type of stuff it used to be um we used to have access to it um i believe it was part of the census information or something similar to that um but then privacy rules changed and that information was removed from us i i do um sticking point is not knowing um, kind of the makeup of the population and who has uh, who has what and um, and where but um, there are there are methods to do it um, we could do it internally through through surveys and through things like that but um, I do agree there's there's information that we unfortunately do not have access to anymore okay thank you you guys see that the CEO Rainer's turned his uh, camera on. I think he has something to add, and then I'll go to Councillor Saudi. Before that, I'll, I'll go to the Deputy Mayor to see if you'd like, like to assume the role of chair or whether you'd want me to finish the, the this part of the uh, presentation. But Councillor Rainer, or sorry, CEO Rainer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to add to uh, CFO McAllister's comments that uh, mm -hmm. Enterprises is an interesting inflection point in its uh, development and evolution. And I think the suggestion that Councillor Waters is making, and, and I think there are a number of others that we'd really like to explore, particularly with the platform of the orbit, uh, as an opportunity to, to really augment our sustainability um, uh, development protocols. Uh, and you know very specifically the infrastructure related to to that orbit. So um, although Councillor Waters is talking more broadly, uh, I think there is an opportunity to really showcase some of the new technology uh, and the new approaches to environmental uh, development um, through the orbit. And and want and enterprises could be that vehicle uh, to be able to pursue some of those things, uh, depending on how they relate to to empower. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, so, Deputy Mayor, would you like to assume the role of chair, or would you want me to continue just for this part of the uh, the presentation? You can continue. I have to apologize. We we're having internet problems down here tonight. Not a problem at all. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you so much, sir. Councilor Waters had a follow up, and then we'll go to Councilor Osadi. I was just going to say that's an, uh, an excellent opportunity in terms of around the the orbit. Uh, a lot of people don't realize they don't even own uh, their furnaces in their house. So, in in newer developments, uh, their their rentals and and homeowners don't even have the chance at the beginning to, to say, you know, that I want to own my furnace. So it's an excellent opportunity, especially if you're thinking of, of going at like an, an all electric uh, version uh, for the herb orbit. So I think it's a, it's a good opportunity. I just hopefully we're serious and we take advantage of it. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, Councillor Arsadi. Thank you. Sorry, uh, just uh, juggling between screens with my mouse here. I just wanted to say that um, I think it's a good idea for the uh, the change, recommended change amendment to the composition of the board, uh, going from uh, one private sector representative to up to three. Um, I just, I like the uh, recommended uh, amendment. Perfect, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, they will move to the the, the uh, recommendation four point four. Mr. Chair, if I, if I could assist, I think uh, the presentation, if I recall correctly, actually has empowers uh, components as well. So I wonder if we, uh, with your concurrence. Uh, and, and Mr. Chaparrus, we could proceed with the empower part of the presentation as well, and then come to uh, the resolution. Um, oh, sorry, my uh, my first day on the job, so absolutely no problem. Go ahead, please. So, Mr. CAO, 
thank you for that clarification. Uh, this is just a presentation for the in-power uh, side of the business. So next slide, please. So board of directors, we have five, uh, CAO and the mayor, ex officio, uh, Director Lake, his term expires uh, this year. Uh, the reappointment term of three years is being requested. Myself, the board asked me if I could stay on for another two years. My term expires uh, uh, this year also. Uh, another private sector representative, Dan Shepherdson. Uh, there was a search done by clerk's department. Thank you very much, uh, clerks. Uh, and they did a search for directors and uh, Dan Shepherdson was chosen by HR department. And what we're trying to do is scatter the uh, appointment terms uh, one year, three year, one, two year, and one year. So that next year, uh, if Dan decides to stay on, he could be nominated for a three year term so that we're, we're not all being uh, nominated at the same time. So, and this is all governed through bylaw number one. And last year we had terms of reference approved by the shareholder and uh, the uh, direction was that it's maintained by the board. Uh, next slide, please. So the Empower Executive Team, myself, Danny Prasad, Shannon Brown, these VP Corporate Services, Glenn McAllister, who we know, and Barb Sesran, the HR Manager and Board Secretary. And next, please. So I took some electricity rate calculations. Uh, this is from the Interior Energy Board website. So Electra, which is our neighbor, the rate's $109, basically in power, 121. Hydro One Network's also our neighbor, 121. So us and Hydro One are virtually the same. Electric utilities, the difference is approximately $12, $12 a month. So the reason I have this here is, uh, will become evident in, in subsequent slides. So next slide, please. So in power is projected for substantial growth. The bottom line is uh, Innisfil's growth. We service 5,000 acres in the south part of Barrie, the annex lands. So the blue line represents the growth in that area and total is on the very top line. So at this point, we have 19,400 customers, 2034, almost 50,000 customers, which is 150% increase. So rapid growth for us. Uh, this estimate does not include the orbit and does not include Innisfil Heights. So, they, so these, these uh, figures could be uh, quite some conservative. So it's possible Innisfil could be growing much faster. Uh, next slide, please. Now the top line, the blue line, what that does, it uh, indicates 2% inflation uh, from today uh, up to 2034. And then the next line underneath it, that shows that uh, in power uh, with, with the continued growth arriving from customers is exhibiting economies of scale with the extra customers coming in. So what we have as, uh, as far as rates go, uh, we are regulated by the Tanner Energy Board. We have major rate applications uh, every five years. The next one is 2022. And we have minor rate applications uh, within those five year periods. So what we're predicting is that 2022, our, um, our cost per customer is gonna go down by 17 and percent. And then uh, stay basically level for the next five years and then go down by about 12 and percent at the next major rate application. Uh, stay steady for a few years and then back down about 7% uh, at, the, at the next rate application. So our cost per customers are continually going down because we're getting a lot more customers to spread our costs over. Uh, next to slide, slide, please. So Glenn, if you wouldn't mind, please. Thank you. Um, okay, so we will go through the 2019 audited financials for in power It'll be much uh, similar as it was for enterprises. So we'll start with the statement of income and comprehensive income. 
So for 2019, Inpower saw an overall increase in revenues of 4.3% or $1.9 million. Of that total, uh, $426,000 was an increase in distribution revenue. Inpower's distribution rates increased by 1.3%, while residential and general service customer based increased by 469 customers, or 2.5%. Of the $45 million in total revenue collected by InPower, 32 million or 72% was in the sale of power. These are costs collected and passed through to Hydro One for transmission charges and the IESO for commodity charges. 25% is distribution revenue and 3% is from other revenues, which includes pole attachment, uh, build, building rent, and recognition of contributions in aid of construction. InPower's operating expenses increased by 6.8% or $2.7 million. Of that, $2.6 million was related to increases in the cost of electricity. And these are the pass-through costs, again, attributed to Hydro One and the IESO. InPower saw an overall decrease in operations, maintenance, and administration of 1% and an increase in depreciation of 6%. Overall, there was a decrease in income from operations of 60% or just under a million dollars, which is primarily attributed to the increase in the costs of power. On the statement of financial position uh, under the assets, so InPower saw an increase in accounts receivable of $4 million. The majority of the increase was from recoverable capital work. So InPower began working on a number of large capital projects to provide the necessary power to the growth areas throughout InPower's service territory. As growth pays for growth, these capital projects are 100% funded from developers. The amounts due were from capital projects which were completed or in construction at year end. Uh, all amounts were received subsequent to the year end. During the year, uh, InPower added $11.6 million in property plant and equipment. The majority of that, just under $9 million, was in upgrading and new distribution assets. These include new and rebuilt pole lines, new and upgraded transformer stations. There was also $2.5 million in work in process at the end of the year. Regulatory and deferral balances increased by $3 million. Regulatory balances are used to capture the differences between the sale of power and the cost of power, i.e. the pass-through cost to Hydro One and the ISO. These balances are generated from the timing difference between when in power bills and collects, the sale of power, from the customers for the use of electricity and when in power is required to pay Hydro One and the IESO for the cost of power. Uh, under the liabilities, in power's liabilities increased by $13 million from 2018. At year end, in power had an operating line of credit of $2.8 million, and there was an increase in contributions in aid of construction of $8 million. Again, contributions in aid of construction are funds received from developers and other third parties who pay for the capital infrastructure additions and upgrades. As mentioned, InPower has been installing a significant amount of infrastructure to provide the required electricity for the growth areas throughout the service territory. Um, and again, the 2019 audited financial statements will be available in the clerk's office. Um, if anybody have, after going through the financial statements and the accompanying notes. Um, the, the financial statements this year are approximately 35 pages, I think. So there's three or four pages of statements and then the rest are the financial statement notes. So if anybody has any questions subsequent, uh, please feel free to reach out. So th thanks, Glenn. Uh uh, through Mr. Chairman, uh, would the auditor like to say a few words, please? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, we have completed our audit of the financial statements and provided management with our report. In our opinion, the accompanying financial statements were presented fairly in all material respects, and the financial position of in power as of December 31st, 2019, along with its financial performance and its cash flows for the year ended in accordance with IFRS. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next slide, please. So, I'll, Mr. Chair, I'll leave it uh, if you have any questions for us. Thank you, Mr. Sheriff. Uh, we have questions from Council, questions or comments? Uh, Councillor Rosati and then Councillor Van Berkel. 
Thank you, through the chair, to the committee. Um, just a question, when you, uh, you were uh, discussing the developers uh, paying for the infrastructure, uh, with the uh, south end buried on the annex lands and the um, development of those homes there, is there not a, a large transfer station that's required to supply the power for that? Wasn't it something like 75 million, if I remember, uh, from the previous term? I just wonder um, how, <laughs> where we would be at uh, in servicing those homes um, as as they're uh, as they're built. So uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to Council Rosati. So um, we're the the short answer is yes, we are going to need a new transformer station in the future. Um, we are currently with Hydro One um, involved in the Barry Area Transmission Upgrade. So the, the Barry Area Transmission Station is um, 400, and I believe it's on Tiffin there, just, uh, just before um, Dunlop Street. So Hydro One is in the process of upgrading that station, and that will give us um, another feeder coming out of there, which should provide uh, short to near term um, power, which will uh, help to feed both Innisfil and the South Barry lands. But you are correct, the amount of growth in the South Barry lands um, far exceeds um, what we have today. Um, our estimates are um, roughly double or more of the amount of power we um, are supplying today. So there will be a, uh, an in-power uh, transmission station, which we are right now looking at um, um, our options for that. So that it's in, gonna be included in our 10-year uh, our strategic plan, but we are looking at different uh, financing options and funding options. Unfortunately, the OEB rules don't allow for everything else is growth pays for growth with the exception of transmission stations. So that is something that we do have to look at um, the funding ability and the funding opportunities for that. Thank you. Councilor Burkle. Yeah, my question was along the same lines, but I have one other question. Uh, are we as efficient like for instance, Hydro One and the work we do to the upgrades and that, like cost-wise, or does it cost more uh, for Innisfil to do it in comparison to Hydro One, for instance? So uh, through Chair to Council Van Burkle, um, no, we our our internal cost to do the work is actually significantly less than having um, if we were to have Hydro One do it. A lot of the work we do um, it is it's because it's internal to our um, service territory. So the distribution, the distribution works, our distribution stations, um, we do that work. The barrier area transmission upgrade is a Hydro One asset. So it's not something that we have the ability to do, but um, so we're kind of at Hydro One's um, mercy with that. But in, in general, our costs, uh, to do construction is, I would say, is significantly less than Hydro One's. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none now, I believe there's a recommendation that's coming up. So looking for a mover and seconder at the presentation by Mr. Sherpu, Interim President and CEO of Enterprises Incorporated and Empower Corporation enterprises and empower uh, with a revised recommendation, sorry. Uh, revised recommendation that Bob Lake, George Sherpu and Dan Shepherdson be appointed as private sector representatives to the Empower Board of Directors. Uh, mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Van Burkle, seconded by Councillor Asadi. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mayor Dolan. Thank you. I just wanted to point out that that should actually say Dr. Shapiro as um, George recently um, achieved his PhD. 
uh, friendly amendment, I believe, is in order then, if possible. Uh, duly moved and seconded. Uh, call for the vote if there are no other questions or comments. Uh, Council, uh, sorry, CEO Rayner. Go ahead, sir. Uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Mr. Chair. Just wanted to, uh, if I could, take a moment to acknowledge and thank uh, Director Lake, who uh, could turn on his video. Uh, he was uh, able to zoom in with us tonight. Uh, continues to be a stalwart uh, 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 member of the board and continues to provide uh, sage advice, uh, particularly given his connections with a number of other committees across the province uh, and the pulse of what's happening with uh, not only the hydro industry but a number of other industries. Um, he's shy at the moment, he doesn't want to turn on his video. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> and then I just uh, wanted to make a quick comment about, um, uh, just to pick up on doc, uh, Dr. Chaparu's comment uh, about uh, the uh, recommendation for Dan Shepherdson, uh, who some of you may know is the, is the CFO, if I'm not mistaken, of uh, uh, the United Way um, uh, in our area, uh, Sakoma Skoka. Uh, so uh, not only uh, uh, sort of financial acumen, but also really community-minded uh, and, and such a great, uh, we're so pleased that uh, he put his name forward uh, to be uh, a member of the board. Um, I, I think this will be a huge addition to, to the board in terms of uh, that community uh, aspect, in addition to, of course, uh, her worship uh, and myself who sit on the board uh, with that lens uh, as well. Um, but uh, I uh, also wanted to take this time, if I could, Mr. Chair, to thank uh, Dr. Chaparu for uh, his uh, willingness to serve as interim CEO and president. Um, there, uh, frankly, could be no one better suited to uh, take back the reins of uh, this very important company uh, and asset of the, of the communities, uh, as Mr. Chaparu, of course, served as president of Empower for a number of years. Um, so we're just so pleased that he came out of retirement um, uh, to be able to provide this guidance and leadership, uh, not only to empower enterprises, but of course in services as well. Uh, and uh, I suppose um, Mr. Chaparu is uh, pleased that the <laughs> recruitment is going well for the CEO uh, and president. Uh, at, the, at the last time I checked, I think we've received over 225 applications uh, for that very important role. So uh, very excited to be able to uh, relieve Mr. Chaparu at some point so that he can return to retirement but he's not allowed to have any more degrees uh, after this one. So thank you, Mr. Chair, appreciate that opportunity. Thanks for that information, that's great, uh, CEO Rayner. Um, any other questions or comments? I think it was duly moved and seconded. Uh, call for the vote. All those in favor? Uh, I don't see any opposed, uh, that carries. And next item, uh, business item, uh, consideration of an amendment to the enterprise's bylaw as uh, presented, number one, with the amendments to bylaw number one being a bylaw right related generally to the conduct of the business and affairs of enterprises incorporated be adopted. Looking for a mover and a seconder. Councilor Waters, Councilor Van Burkle, any questions or comments? Call for the vote. Those in favor? Uh, that, that's carried unanimously. And next, um, there's this consideration of a res resolution to hold a closed session meeting. We recommended that the council resolve into a closed session meeting to consider the following adders, a trade secret or scientific, technical, commercial, or financial information that belongs to the municipality or local board and has a monetary value or potential monetary value, section 239-2.I of the Municipal Act 2001 and it's an update on InPower. Uh, mover and seconder to move into closed session. Councillor Asadi, moved by count, seconded by Councillor Ices. All those in favor? We're going into closed session. We have to put our new hats on. Remember, as the mayor always tells us, never 